Hello, this is Shay Jackson with Hype Math, and we will be reviewing for the 2022 Texas Star Math Test for sixth graders. Our concept is converting fractions, decimals, and percents. Remember, sixth graders, venture outside your comfort zone. The rewards are worth it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell so that you can be alerted when we upload new videos. The problems we will be going over is in our sixth grade star math review workbook and it is available for purchase in our store. The link will be in the description box so that you can grab yours today. Before we go over our problems, let's do a quick review of converting fractions to decimals. So the first option, and there are two, the first option we will go over is finding an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 10, 100, or 1,000. So let's look at an example. We are going to convert 3 fifths to a decimal. So the first question I'm going to ask myself if I'm going to use option one is can I make this an equivalent fraction with the denominator of 10 and the answer is yes why is it yes because if I multiply 5 by a number which is 2 that will be 10 so here we have 3 fifths times 2 over 2 remember whatever you do to the bottom you have to do to the top in the same way, whatever number you multiply, multiply at the top, you have to do at the bottom as well whenever you are converting a fraction. So we have three, time, three times two is equal to six and five times two is equal to 10. So six tenths is equivalent to three fifths. And that is it. Now what we need to do is convert six tenths to a decimal. Well, that's easy peasy because we know that six tenths is 0 0.6 because that first place value after the decimal is the tenths place. And that is how we convert fractions to decimals. When we look for an equivalent fraction where we can have a denominator of 10, 100 or 1000. Let's look at another example. We are going to convert one half to a decimal. Again, our first question will be, can I make this an equivalent fraction with the denominator of 10? And the answer is yes. Now, as we said before, for option one, we can use 10. We're looking for 10, 100 or 1000. Whenever you're looking for the numbers, you always want to choose the smallest number of 10 that you can, because if not, you'll have to reduce the fraction, which will cause the, which will cause extra steps, which you really don't want to do, right? So we have one half. We're looking at that denominator and we're asking ourselves, what number can I multiply by two in order to make 10? The answer is five. And so we're going to multiply five at, with the numerator and the denominator. That is where we get five over five. So let's multiply our numerators going across. One times five is equal to five. And two times five is equal to 10. Five tenths is an equivalent fraction of one half. Now, all we need to do is convert 5 tenths to a decimal, and that is 0 0.5. Why do we say that? Because the decimal place right after the decimal point is the tenths place. Well, since it's 5 tenths, we know that that is where the 5 goes. So that's our first option in converting fractions to decimals. Let's look at our second option. Our second option is dividing the numerator by the denominator. So let's look at an example. We are going to convert one fourth to a decimal. What we're going to do is divide the numerator by 
which is one by the denominator four. Okay, so since we know that four cannot go into one, we need to put 0 0.00. 0. And when we put 0. 0, 0.00, now we can divide. Four can go into 10 two times. Now, whenever you put that decimal place for 1.00, 0, 0, make sure you put that decimal place up at the top as well so that it'll align with where you put the decimal place, okay? So we have 0 0.2. We know that 4 times 2 is 8. 10 minus 8 is 2. We bring down our other 0. 4 can go into 20 five times. So 5 times 4 times 5 is equal to 20. So our answer is 0 0.25. Now let's look at one more example. We have converting 9 over 25 to a decimal. We are going to divide by the numerator, which is 9, by the denominator, which is 25. Since we know that 25 cannot go into 9, we need to put our 0, 0, .00, and we go ahead and ask how many times can 25 go into 90? We know that it's 3. 3 times 25 is equal to 75. So we have 90 minus 75. That is 15. And then we bring down our 0. 25 can go into 150 six times. So 25 times 6 is 150. And 150 minus 150 is 0. So our answer is 0 0.36. Now that we've reviewed how to convert fractions to decimals in two ways, let's dive into our problem. Number five, Alyssa will correctly label the numbers 48.4, 48 and a half, 48 and nine hundredths, and 48 and three fifths on the number line be below. Which number will be located closest to 49? Is it A? 48.4, B, 48 and a half, C, 48 and nine hundredths, or D, 48 and three fifths. The first question we're going to ask ourselves, which is absolutely the most important question is, what are we looking for? We are looking for the number that is located closest to 49. The second most important question is, what information can help find the answer? Well, the information that can help find the answer are our numbers, okay? Those are our numbers, and what we need to do is convert two of them. That's how we solve the problem. We are going to convert two of our numbers so that we can ha have all of the numbers in decimal form, and then we can plot our numbers. So, in order to plot the numbers, step one, we are going to convert the numbers to decimals. Now, we have to ask ourselves, can we use option one, find an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 10, 100, or 1,000, or option two, divide the numerator by the denominator. So, let's take a look. We can use option one for both fractions. So starting with 48 and a half, we are going to ask ourselves, looking at that denominator, which is two, is there a number that I can multiply two by in order to come up with 10, 100, or 1,000? And the answer is yes, five. So we are going to multiply one half times five over five. Now let's multiply our numerators going across. One times five is equal to five. Now we're going to multiply our denominators. Two times five is equal to 10. So our answer is 48 and five tenths. Well, we know what 
5 tenths is equal to, right? Because we did an example like that. We know it's 0.5, so our answer is 48.5. Next, we are going to tackle 48 and 3 fifths. We're going to look at our denominator to see if we can make an equivalent fraction um, out with 5 to make 10, and the answer is yes. So we're going to multiply 2 over 2. Multiplying our numerators going across, 3 times 2 is equal to 6, and 5 times 2 is equal to 10. So our, our equivalent fraction now is 6 tenths, and our answer is 48 and 6 tenths. Well, we know how to convert 6 tenths as well, so our final answer is 48.6. Now that we've completed step one, let's go to step two. We are going to plot the numbers on the number line. We have 48.4 for A again, B 48.5, C 48 and 9 tenths, D 48.6. Okay, so let's start on our number line. We see that 48.5. 9 tenths or 48 and 9 tenths is closer to what would be considered 48.1 because if you notice we have 48 and 49 on our number line and in between that we have um, hash marks that equal 1 okay so that is why the 48.09 or 48 and 9 tenths is to the left of that first hash mark because that would be that first hash mark would be 48 and 1 tenth okay so next we are going to label 48.4 you see where that is and it's color coded so you can follow along 48.5 would be next and then 48.6 so what is the correct answer which number would be located closest to 49? And if you said D, you are absolutely correct. 48.6 is the number that would be located closest to 49. Great job. Let's go to question number six. And again, these problems are in our workbook that the, the link will be in the description box so you can purchase yours today. Dana placed the following points on a number line. Which number is not, in all caps, correctly placed? So let's look at our points. We have point P at negative 24 over 3, point Q at negative 9 over 2, point R at 7 over 2, at point S at 15 over 3. So for our answer choices, we have F, point P, G, point Q, H, point R, and J, point S. What's our most important question? What are we looking for? Okay, we are looking for the number that is not correctly placed. Not, that means it's all the way wrong, okay? The second most important question is what? What information can help find the answer? Well, the information that can help find the answer is knowing the value of our points. And now what we need to do is we need to figure out how to solve the problem, okay? The way that we're gonna solve this problem is we need to convert our improper fractions to mixed numbers and then we're going to plot them on our number line. So let's do that now. Step one, we are going to convert our improper fractions to a mixed number. Starting with P, negative 24 over 3, well, that's equal to negative 8. Q, which is negative 9 over 2, is equal to negative 4 and 1 halves. R, which is 7 halves is equal to 3 and 1 half, and S is equal to 15 over 3, which is equal to 
five. So that was step one of us finding our answer. We converted our improper fractions to mixed numbers. And now our step two is plotting them on the number line. All right. So for point P, we said that that's negative eight. Okay, and if you look on that number line, we plotted the points. For Q, we said that it's negative four and a half. We pointed, plotted Q. For R, we say that it's three and a half. We're gonna plot three and a half. And if you notice that that's a positive, anytime that there's not a sign in front of the number, that means it's a positive number. And then for S, we have five, and we've plotted that on our number line as well. One thing that I will say, sixth graders, is whenever you're solving problems, it's better to solve the problem for yourself first. Work it out. Pull out your handy dandy scratch paper, and then once you get the answer, compare your answer to the answer choices. That increases your chance of getting the problem correct. Okay, so we've plotted our points. Now we are going to try to figure out what is the correct answer. Can you see what it is? And your answer is G. Point Q is not correctly placed. G is the correct answer. And that is in sixth graders for converting decimals, fractions, and percents. Again, you can follow along with us in our sixth grade star math review workbook. The link will be in the description box. This is Shay Jackson. Have a great day.